Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would talk you through 10 of the books that have caught my eye recently. So I don't think I've seen this concept on Booktube before, but I thought it'd just be like books that I've been adding to my TBR, books that I have been seeing that I think might uh, interest me. So things that have just, yeah, piqued my interest and just ch chatting through whether you think I'm going to like them if my I haven't like bought these books, I haven't like looked too much into them, I think I've just heard about them and I've gone, oh that sounds interesting, add it to Goodreads TBR and then I generally like add books to my Goodreads TBR and then I like think about it for quite a while before I buy them so I like I ruminate on them for quite a bit as I like settle them into the TBR I'm like do I actually want these, do I like they, they, they I need just I need time to like think about them but there's never there's there's rarely books that I hear about and go instant buy. So these are ones that I'm sort of like ruminating on. They've piqued my interest. I'm intrigued by the idea of them. And so I thought I'd talk you through them. And then you can either say, yes, Abby, those books sound like right up your street. They're, they're for you. Or you can go, no, Abby, you, you, you've gone a bit wrong with that one. Maybe don't read that one. And you can see which books I am becoming aware of because of Booktube. I will get Goodreads up because I do not know that much about these books. I think I've just heard about them once or twice and gone, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I ha I'll get Goodreads up for the more in-depth synopsi. I have recently watched the World Hoppers sci-fi video. So there are a few influences from that on here. I also have watched the World Hoppers uh, fantasy romance video. And so there's a few influences from that on here as well. That, that's where I'm getting a lot of these recommendations. Yeah, starting off with the sci-fi, the first one on the list that I've been intrigued by is The Oracle Year. And this is by Charlie Sewell. And this is about like this guy that wakes up one morning and he's got all these premonitions for the future. And, and so he starts like, he like makes this website where he puts these premonitions up saying in at this time, this is going to happen. And then they all start coming true. And so people start believing him. And then like the government is after him because he's making all these correct predictions for the future. I'm not too sure where it, where it goes from there, but, and like how he's got these premonitions and predictions. But uh, I saw, it was Jesse May that was talking about this like, during that World Hoppers video. And I was like, that sounds so interesting. Like, I guess sort of our world, but like with sci-fi elements because he's predicting the future and like where he's getting these predictions from sounded really cool. I've never heard of it before. So that one I'm intrigued by. The other sci-fi book that I got from that video is The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley. And I've heard Cameron Hurley's name before. And I've sort of just gone, Cameron Hurley, sci-fi writer, but don't really know that much about her. But Angela from Literature Science Alliance has recommended this one. I think she recommended it in that video, or she's definitely recommended it to me as well in the past. So I'm definitely intrigued by this one. It's a science fiction thriller about a futuristic war during which soldiers are broken down into light in order to get them to the front lines on Mars. I believe that the person we're following, like these aren't people that are high up, these are the grunts and they get broken down into light and transported to the front line of the war. But the person that we're following seems to have different memories and like is experiencing different parts of the war or isn't quite experiencing things as the higher ups are telling him is what's happening. So it seems as though the higher ups are lying about things. And yeah, I mean, I haven't read, I don't think I've read a sci-fi thriller. So I think I'm very intrigued to see that. And like the interesting how they like break people down into light and then transport them to the war. So yes, uh, I believe it's also a standalone, which, you know, I need more standalones in my life. A book that isn't like necessarily in my normal genre is The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher and I believe this one is a like horror fantasy or like a horror and it's about a young woman who discovers like this portal into this other world in her uncle's house and it leads to this like really scary scary place. It, oh yeah it's like a bunker within her uncle's house and then like when you come out you get all these other bunkers like in this other portal world. These bunkers are like, this, these worlds, these portals are haunted by creatures that seem to hear thoughts. And the more you fear them, the stronger they become. So, I mean, I quite like portal fantasies. I have a whole video on portal fantasies, which I will link up, up, above and below. I, I feel as though I like that subgenre of fantasy. So part of me thinks I could enjoy this, even though it's a horror, which isn't really my thing because I am a scaredy cat and a complete pansy, so I can't deal with horror at all. But maybe having that like, portal fantasy 
in with it mixed in I might enjoy it uh, so yeah I, I'm in intrigued intrigued an author that I read before who has a book that I have not read uh, I didn't realize she had another book, another book out is Anna Stevens so I've read her God Blind trilogy and I really enjoyed it last year and I didn't realize she had a new book but she has a new book called The Stone Knife which is the start of a new trilogy called The Songs of the Drowned so it's a fantasy epic of freedom and empire gods and monsters love loyalty honor and betrayal for generations, the forests of exact Japan have echoed with the clash of weapons as nation after nation has fallen to the empire of songs and to the unending magical music that binds its people together. Now only two free tribes remain. The empire is not their only enemy. Monstrous scale predators lurk in rivers and streams with deadly music of their own. As battles loom, fighters on both sides must decide how far they will go for their beliefs and for ones they love. A veteran general seeks peace through a war a warrior and a shaman set out to understand their enemies and an ambitious noble tries to bend ancient magic to her will. So it just sounds like a epic, epic fantasy. And I heard about this on Petrick's channel and he told me that he preferred this to the Godblind series. So, I mean, I enjoy Godblind, so hopefully this just continues my love of Anna Stevens and uh, hopefully I love it. Uh, a further, like, recommendation from Petrick, well, I think it's a love of a few booktubers, and one that I want to try a bit more is Joe Abercrombie and The Blade itself. So I haven't read that much Grimdark and I feel as though when people talk about Grimdark they talk about Joe Abercrombie. Yeah I'm, I'm, ner I'm a bit nervous because because he seems to be very well loved and like I've heard about his books and I've heard about Glockta who is like a torturer and the thing is I don't really like reading torture scenes because they, I'm squeamish. I'm squeamish and so I don't know if I'm gonna like that but everyone seems to like Everyone seems to have very conflicting thoughts on Glockter because they don't like him because he's a torturer, but they also like him. And then I've heard people say that like the first book, there isn't any plot, it's character driven, and then the rest of the series, the plot. And so I'm, uh, I'm nervous about uh, Joe Abercrombie. Part of me is like, am I going to like his books? I don't know. I feel as though, uh, I feel as though I want to give his works a try, but I don't know if they're going to be for me. That's where I'm at currently. I'm like, I'm not sure if it's going to work for me. I want to give him a go. So uh, yeah, there's, there's like some conflicting like thoughts on that, but everyone does seem to love it. Some of the books from the fantasy romance recommendations that I'm very interested in trying out, the first one being Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. And I've had Juliette Marillier, I guess on my radar for a little while, like I, th I mean, I think I added Daughter of the Forest to my TV in like 2014, like she's been on my TV, oh, she's been on my like radar for quite a while but I still haven't read any of her books but I feel as though I've heard a lot of people talking about her recently and so I really want to give her I really want to give her a try and I think they've re-released the covers of the covers for this series and that's just that sparked my interest even more because I didn't really like the covers I didn't like the mass market paperback but they now have these really pretty editions in paperback that I um intrigued that, that have really sparked my interest even more if I mean that sounds so shallow but it's the way it is and so this is following Saoirse, who is the seventh child and only daughter of the Lord Column of Seven Waters. Bereft of a mother, she is comforted by her six brothers who love and protect her. Saoirse is the light of their lives, and that they are determined that she know only contentment. But Saoirse's joy is shattered when her father is bewitched by his new wife, an evil enchantress who binds her brothers with a terrible spell, a spell which only Saoirse can lift by staying silent. If she speaks before she completes the quest set to her by the fair folk and their queen, the Lady of the Forest, she will lose her brothers forever. When Saoirse is kidnapped by the enemies of Seven Waters and taken to the foreign land, she is torn between the desire to save her beloved brothers and a love that comes only once. Saoirse despairs at ever being able to complete her task, but the magic of the fair folk knows no boundaries and love is the strongest magic of them all. So yeah, I just feel as though I want to give her a try. I want to give her a try. And I feel like I'm going to love uh, Juliette Marie. She's got loads of books and I have high hopes that I'm going to love them all. Another author that has been on my radar for a very long time but I feel as though has recently just like come back onto my radar after being off it for quite a while is Anne Bishop with the Black Jewels series and the first one being Daughter of the Blood. The Dark Kingdom is preparing itself for the fulfilment of an ancient prophecy, the arrival of a new queen, which who will wield more power than even the High Lord of Hell himself. But this new ruler is young and very susceptible to influence and corruption. Whoever controls her controls the darkness. And now three sworn enemies begin a ruthless game of politics and intrigue, magic and betrayal, and the destiny of an entire world is at stake. So I feel as though this is going to completely interweave like 
the fantasy that I really love because that sounds like very fantasy heavy with love interests and romance so that is why I'm intrigued about it but I've heard a few people talk about Anne Bishop and so she seems like quite a popular author uh, and yeah I'm intrigued to see what her books are like and then the final fantasy romance book that I'm interested in is A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher Kingdoms will rise and fall for her, but not if she can help it. Cat lives disguised as a soothsayer in a travelling circus. Circus? I love a circus. She is the perfect content she's perfectly content avoiding the danger and destiny the gods and her homicidal mother have saddled her with. That is until Griffin, an ambitious warlord from the magic prize south, fixes her with his steely gaze and upsets her illusion of safety forever. Griffin knows Cat is the kingmaker, the woman who divines the truth through lies. He wants her as a powerful weapon for his newly conquered realm until he realises he wants her for much more than her magic. Cat fights him at every turn, but Griffin's fairness, loyalty and smouldering advances make him increasingly hard to resist and leave her wondering if her life should, really does have to be short and lived alone. Circus? Circus? Sign me up. I have a whole recommendation video on circus books and I'm always after more circus books. So I did not realise there was a circus in this. Ooh, I'm, this is going to have to like go straight up the TBR because... <laughs> I love a circus. Okay, okay, uh, yeah, that one definitely, definitely piqued my interest now. I have heard Mare Reads talk a lot about the Fury Born series by Claire Legrand, and I was always like, oh, maybe I'll read that book. Maybe, I'll, maybe, maybe I like it. But after hearing Mare like give the whole series five stars and her love for the whole series, I'm like, oh, okay, yes, I definitely have to read that series. So. This is like a YA fantasy series and I know that it's like set a thousand years apart. You're following two characters that are a thousand years apart and there's a prophecy with one being like, one of them's meant to be like the sun queen and one's meant to be like the blood queen or whatever. Like one's meant to be good and one's meant to be bad or I don't, I don't quite know, but they're set a thousand years apart. Uh, and I find that really interesting how you can have these very different timelines with these very different people. And I've just heard that like, these are very strong female characters. I've heard that there's a there's some love interests. I haven't really wanted to look too much into it, but intrigued and Mare's glowing reviews of the series has uh, completely sold me on it. And then the final book that has piqued my interest recently is Lancelot by Giles Christian. And so I have been watching Merlin, uh, the BBC TV show, and I, I love it. It's just so fun. I'm, I've been getting like my Merlin fix and we've been watching it. Well, I've been watching it with some friends over on Discord and we've been watching it roughly like every weekend and we watch a few episodes in between during the week and it's just like so nostalgic and like being back in that world and in, I just it's so fun if you've not watched Merlin then you should definitely watch Merlin. Merlin is a wonder but the wonder is that he's such an idiot. There must be another art because this one's an idiot. He's trying to get rid of me and if you weren't such a clock pole you'd see that. Oh what? But anyway I'm gonna be getting into the final season now and so I feel as though when we finish this, I'm going to feel like bereft of my Merlin and King Arthur content. And I'm going to need to have like my fix through book format because who doesn't need like an Arthurian retelling in their lives? So the one that I have been hearing about recently is Lancelot by Giles Christian. From what I've gathered, this is basically like just a reimagining or re retelling of the Arthurian tales with Lancelot as the main character. So I feel as though a lot of us might know roughly where this might go but I am yeah I I just I, I'm just gonna miss King Arthur and Merlin and Lancelot and Guinevere and I just need that content in my life I, I, I'm gonna need it after after watching that tv show so yeah that is the final book that has piqued my interest recently and that is working its way to potentially becoming part of my physical TBR because I have become very intrigued by them. Please let me know if you think these are right for me or not right for me or what you think of them. If any of these are your favourite books, if if you've heard of any of them or if I've like suddenly brought your attention to them, let me know down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in my future videos. Bye!